This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. In the past week or so, I reported on the story out of Belgium of how the Flemish bishops openly declared their demand for the church to change its teachings on certain sins that sacred scripture reminds us cry out to heaven for vengeance. By extension, their belief that sacred scripture has been wrong this entire time and that the church has been wrong in teaching morality, and how these same bishops punctuated this statement by coming up with a mass setting to bless James Martin partnerships. Now, I have the news of two well-regarded European bishops stepping forward to correct the bishops of Belgium and to demand that Rome do something about this. Neither of these bishops are exactly hardline traditionalists. I know many of you will point that out, but this is still a good sign. This isn't a small story, despite too many people being too focused on internet drama and secular concerns to note the collapse in Catholic morality that is coming from the hierarchy, all in the name of synodality. So like I said, two European bishops have stepped forward to attempt a fraternal correction of the Flemish bishops of Belgium, who promulgated a document okaying blessings of the James Martin parody of the nuptial sacrament. One of the bishops is pretty well known to regular listeners and viewers of Return to Tradition, that bishop being Cardinal Gerhard Mueller of Germany. And his statement, I have to, you know, play with the language to make it friendly for this place, unfortunately. Now, the other is a Dutch bishop, Cardinal Wilhelm Eich of Utrecht. Since I've only rarely featured the Dutch cardinal on this channel, I'll start with him first before presenting Cardinal Mueller's public statement in full. The Cardinal of Utrecht has publicly condemned the actions of the Flemish bishops, who not only used Amoris Laetitia to justify their call for changing the church's teachings on that sin that cries out to heaven for vengeance that pastor jimmy martin of the jesuit church let's be frank about this has an unusual and unbecoming interest in for a priest they the, the flemish bishops even wrote a mass setting to bless those unions the german bishops smiled and nodded while watching this as did most of the bishops of america ireland australia and anywhere else in the western world that you care to name since all the national synodal documents called for changing the church's teaching on that sin in particular. Makes you kind of wonder why, doesn't it? Now, the Dutch cardinal here is having none of it. A LifeSite News reported both of these stories, actually, and with this story, we get this headline. Dutch cardinal condemns Belgian bishops, <clears throat> James Martin Blessings, calls for Vatican correction. Situations that are objectively wrong from a moral point of view cannot be blessed. God's grace does not shine on the path of sin, says Cardinal Wilhelm Eich of Utrecht. From the article, quote, The Cardinal Archbishop of Utrecht, Wilhelm Eich, has called for the Flemish bishops of Belgium to be corrected by ecclesiastical authorities for their departure from the church's moral and sacramental discipline with their publication of a quote-unquote right of blessing for James Martin pairings. A Flemish bishop's document with its proposed liturgical blessings for these couples was issued on September 20th, shortly after the German bishops approved documents of their synodal way insisting on acceptance of James Martin partnerships by the church. And, you know, mostly, quote, the cardinal strongly objected to the so-called right of blessing, which is the mass setting I mentioned earlier, pointing out a whole host of reasons that it must be rejected and the bishops responsible publicly corrected by Rome. We'll see if that actually happens. The Flemish bishops are quick to point out that their right of blessing doesn't stand on equal footing with the traditional marital blessing. The cardinal drew attention to the fact that it nonetheless clearly models itself on the nuptial right, which, folks, is kind of a problem. The Flemish bishops wrote an equivalent to the I do of the sacramental vows, which is heresy, and the heresy of the worst kind. But the problem is more complicated than that. Such unions cannot be blessed by the church because everything involved in them is sinful and contrary to the declared law of God. And that law never changes, regardless of how society changes its views on these things. Even a commitment of this kind cannot be endorsed by the church, yet so many don't see that. The church calls those who, who live in this situation to live chaste lives of prayer. The cardinal spends sometime pointing out the illogical position the Flemish bishops are in before calling for the Vatican to intervene and correct the Flemish bishops. Quoting the LifeSite article again, In opposition to such wholesale capitulation on the part of bishops to the 
acronym program of the world, Cardinal Ike called on the competent ecclesiastical authorities in Rome to correct the Flemish bishops and require them to withdraw their statement. The statement of the Flemish bishops, he declared, in which they allow the blessings of James Martin Parings and even provide a liturgical model for it, meets with inherent ethical objections, radically contradicts a recent ruling by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, and carries the risk that it may lead Catholics to views on the morality of these pairings that are contrary to church teaching. Catholics who accept the church's teaching, including on morality of the flesh, therefore fervently hope that the Flemish bishops will soon be asked by ecclesiastically competent circles to withdraw their statement and that the latter will comply. End quote. And while I hope that he's right, don't hold your breath on Francis restoring order. The entire Western Catholic world is in rebellion against the law of God on this issue and on related issues. And Francis has signaled his support. So what's likely to happen? I have no idea, but Francis may change things by taking what looks like the most moderate proposal and adopting it, making himself look like that great reformer that everyone bills him as, while making it also look like he's reasonably orthodox on these issues. While couching everything he does, of course, in ambiguous language that allows the worst elements in the church to get what they want if they're creative enough. And you know why I know that? Because that's exactly what happened with Amoris Laetitia. And that's probably what's going to happen here. Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, meanwhile, does what he does best. He wrote a public letter fraternally correcting the, those causing offense. In this case, the Flemish bishops. The point of such letters is honestly to help the laity not fall into the trap of thinking that the Flemish bishops have fallen into themselves and for there to be a public record that someone tried to do something to prevent them from openly embracing heresy. That's important for future generations to see because they're openly embracing heresy, immorality, and schism. Here's Cardinal Gerhard Mueller's letter in full. Abiding in the spirit of truth. A Fraternal Correction of the Bishops of Flanders slash Belgium by Gerhard Cardinal Mueller. The Flemish bishops published a statement on pastoral care for James Martin folks on September 20th, 2022. They also propose a kind of liturgy with prayers of blessing for persons of the James Martin uh, affliction together in a parody of the nuptial sacrament. They think they can refer to the apostolic exhortation of Morris Laetitia by Pope Francis. In doing so, they take the highest teacher of the church as a crown witness for a so-called inclusive pastoral ministry without turning away from sin. Such an approach, however, is diametrically opposed to the word of God on marriage, the family, and the creation of human beings. However, the well-meaning intention to emphasize the unconditional dignity of each individual human being regardless of his or her right or wrong behavior, is reversed by the blatant contradictions against the hermeneutical principles and the contents of the revealed faith of the church. The magisterium of the Pope, ecumenical councils, or regional episcopal assemblies, is not above the word of God, but serves it, teaching nothing but what has been handed down because it hears the word of God with reverence by divine mandate and with the assistance of the Holy Spirit keeping it holy and interpreting it faithfully, and because it draws from this one treasure of faith all that it proposes to believe as revealed by God. Thus, the declaration of the Flemish Episcopate and similar efforts in other parts of the world is a formal transgression of competence with respect to the universal church and heretical opposition to the revealed truth of the creator's specific blessing, benediction, on the marriage of human beings. The intimacy of Eros, Sexus, and Agape comes in the order of creation and redemption according to God's holy will only to a man and a woman who have freely given each other the yes, word both for the whole life and under all circumstances. The authority of God revealed in Jesus Christ must not be relativized and broken down according to the passive religious wisdom and philosophical insights of the authoritative people of world history. For Jesus Christ is the eschatological revelation of God in person. In the Logos made flesh, all truth of God is contained. The revealed truth of God, which is recorded unabridged and unadulterated by the church in the teaching of the apostles, cannot be overcome, supplemented, or corrected by any speculative or empirical science from the created reason of man. And that is why only the Son of God and the only Savior of the world could go back beyond the pragmatic adaptations of the Pharisees then and now, 
to the weaknesses of fallen human nature, to the original will of the Creator for human marriage. The Son of God, who alone knows the Father and reveals his will to us, reminds us of the nature of marriage with the characteristics of monogamy and dissolubility and openness to children given to them by God. Only those who can naturally become so can become one flesh, and only he could, could elevate marriage to the sacrament of the new covenant, which participates and signifies the unity of Christ and the church in real terms. So the Flemish bishops, by bringing James Martin partnerships closer to the marriage of, of human beings instituted by God, are obscuring the teachings of Christ and his church. They go beyond the renewal of man through Christ our Savior. They capitulate to the logic of the old world, which wants to pragmatically limit the consequences of the fall only according to human reasoning, instead of putting on the new man, created in God's image, in true righteousness and holiness. Both the pagan world before Christ and the world of today, which does not know Christ, or has fallen away from him again, or the Christians who make a lazy compromise with it, relativize the uniqueness of marriage. They betray its dignity by degrading marriage as being one among arbitrary forms of togetherness and satisfaction of fleshly desires. The pastoral care of the church has ta the task of leading people to God in the way of Christ, the Good Shepherd. This includes its invitation to overcome, with the help of grace, our selfish inclinations and temptations to sin, and to live a life as it is pleasing to God, and therefore also as it is good for us and makes us happy in God. The Flemish bishops, on the other hand, mislead the people entrusted to their pastoral care who are affected by disordered inclinations, as well as their parents and acquaintances, for they offer them to soothe their consciousness and alleged prayer of blessing for James Martin partnerships, like a kind of placebo, which awakens in them the illusion that James Martin activities or uh, fleshly contacts outside marriage are all right before God and not a grave sin like other transgressions against the sixth and ninth commandments of the Decalogue. Genuine pastoral care is concerned about the individual human being and his hopes and needs, his possibilities and failures, and is not blinded by the false appearance of political ideologies and anthropological heresies that promise salvation but plunge millions into misery. In this time of confusion, which affects even the pastors and teachers of the church, every bishop should meditate on the word of the apostle, St. Paul, to his collaborator and successor, Timothy, which also applies to him and becomes a judgment. I adjure thee by God and by Christ Jesus, the coming judge of the living and the dead. Preach the word, stand up whether convenient or inconvenient, for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but will seek teachers according to their own lusts to tickle their ears. But be sober in all things, enduring suffering. Do your work as preacher of the gospel. Faithfully fulfill your ministry. The line that stuck out to me was this one, which encapsulates the problem with apostate Rome in the Western church in our time. Quoting his letter again, They capitulate to the logic of the old world, which wants to pragmatically limit the consequences of the fall, only according to human reasoning, instead of putting on the new man, created in God's image and true righteousness and holiness. End quote. How is he wrong? He's not. The world rejects the notion of sin, then redefines it to fit their purposes, which is why the world cheers on Francis and his concept of ecological sins and all that rot, while rejecting the moral claims of the church as being evil. The sinfulness of the world on this issue knows no bounds. And yet these bishops are just the most blatant example from the past week of the virtual schism that is in the church now in our time. Will Rome act? I doubt it. They seem to be on board with this stuff, at least in spirit. But I'm curious what you have to say about this, what you think. So let me know in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As they're sharing these messages on social media, that helps a lot as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.